Well, I've got my camera backed off to show you the inside of my shop. I've got it cleaned out. I've got enough room to put a vehicle in here if I need to. Now, in today's video, I'm going to talk about a compression tenon or spigot and an expansion recess on the bottom of a bowl. And I'll tell you my thoughts on that, like when to use one and when to use the other. Anyway, let me show you a little bit more of the shop and we'll get over on the lathe and we'll do a little bit of turning. All right, now, what inspired me to do this video, I was watching YouTube and watching a video and someone was making a bowl but they had an expansion recess on the bottom. And I got to thinking, that's an important issue. Do you use a compression fixing or an expansion recess on your project? All right, now I really want to narrow down the scope of this video and pinpoint exactly what I'm trying to get across. It's not necessarily about how to form a compression fixing or an expansion fixing. Okay, it's why you would do one or the other and why I think one is better for most pieces. I think the spigot or the tenon is better in most cases because you can have the outside form of a vessel, a bowl or a hollow form, whatever you're doing, completed except for this area down here. Now you can turn that tenon into um, a little foot, which I don't necessarily like. I like to take it completely off. It would look like this. And then I would just simply remove that spigot. All right, so there's the bottom of my vessel. And I've got a little bit of a, a concave uh, form to that. Very simple. Now I haven't touched the outside of my bowl. I had that established before and I don't have to mess with it. Now let's look at the expansion recess on the other hand. You have a couple options. You can simply leave that on your vessel, which I really don't like, okay? Except for a platter and I'll explain that as I go along in this video. So how do we deal with this expansion recess if we want to remove it completely? Well, it's difficult to establish the outside shape of your bowl in this case and remove it because what you have to do looks like this. Okay, now the dots I've drawn in here indicate where I might want to have my final shape of this bowl completed. Okay, so I've got to take off all of this wood right in here, right in here, and I may need to reshape a little bit of this uh, where this area meets this part that's already established. And you can see the problem. That's a little bit more difficult. With the compression fixing, the tenon or the spigot, I can have the outside of that bowl completed. The shape is completed except for just taking off the foot. Now let's go back to the lathe and I'll show you a little bit more what I'm talking about. Now let me show you a couple pieces that I think qualify for either the compression fixing or the expansion recess. Now this is a nice platter I did recently and here's the back of it and right in here is an expansion recess. And I think it's a very accepted uh, practice to do this and just to leave that. This is probably an eighth of an inch. I could reverse this and maybe even round that over and hide that. But this is a utilitarian piece. I want it to be a food server. I want it to be used. Now here's another piece that uh, I'll show you the front of this. This is a piece my wife did really cool, some ducks and some cattails on the front of that. Now on the back, um, there's also an expansion recess right here. And I think that's acceptable, okay? I think there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this may be a wall hanger, but anyway. 
see what else we got here. All right, now I wanted to show you a couple bowls. These are uh, two bowls out of silver maple, and they are just absolutely gorgeous. And these two bowls were a coring project. Small bowls cored out of the, the larger one. And there's really no foot. It's just a little bit of a flat area right here on the bottom. You know, so they sit fairly well on, on a table. This has got a little bit bigger flat area. So my wife and I, we actually use these for salad bowls, food servers. Anyway, this is my favorite way to finish off the bottom of a bowl, especially. There's nothing there. And I don't mind a little foot, or maybe just a little uh, detail right there. So the bowl sits flat. So anyway, very nice. Now if you look closely, you can see how the grain matches up on these two bowls. So these are the two bowls I'm going to be working on in this video. On the left is a tenon for a compression fixing, and the one on the right is an expansion recess. Now let me make an important point about the expansion recess. If you put too much force on your chuck jaws expanding in that area, it can possibly break out. So that's a consideration in making the decision on which one to use. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of turning on these bowls. I'm going to show you right now how I finish the inside. This is the little bowl with the compression fixing or the tenon on it, and I'm doing a little bit of sanding. And right below my drill is my dust collection chute, which works very nicely. Using a two inch sanding pad on that, and I go through the grits. Uh, I won't show you all of that. But uh, I like to finish as much as I can on a bowl when the bowl is in this position. I, I sand it. I put one, two, three coats of, of finish. In this case, I'm using an oil finish. I'll show you that later. And I'm going to do a little bit of wet sanding on this, actually. I've got some, uh, sort, of, some sort of a solvent there that I'm going to spray on there. And you can use a lot of different things for wet sanding. I'm going to just saturate that surface, do a little bit of wet sanding. But this bowl has the compression uh, tenon on it, and I'll reverse this a little bit later and show you how to take that off. And I'll compare this bowl to the other one with the expansion recess. And I think we've seen enough sanding. All right, now we're going to move on to the second bowl. I've taken this one off, and it's ready to be reversed. So I'm going to put the other bowl with the expansion recess into the same chuck jaws and simply expand those jaws into the recess on the bottom of the bowl. Well, you might hear Coco in the background playing with the rawhide. I recently purchased some of this finish from Doctor's Workshop, and I'm just kind of figuring it out, and uh, I like it so far. So I've decided to finish these two bowls with that Doctor's Workshop finish. This is the Micro Crystal Wax Bowl Finish. So I am ready to reverse chuck these. I'm going to set up a friction drive. Now I've got the basic thickness of this bowl set. This level right here is the finished thickness. Okay, and I'm just allowing for the inside and the outside to be maybe a little less than a quarter of an inch. And all I got to do is take off the uh, tenon right here. And I want this to be the high point. So I'll show you that. Let's take off this, uh, this particular bowl. I'm going to just buff this a little bit.
And what I try to do when I'm finishing a, a, a bowl or really anything on I'm working on the lathe is I try to do as much finishing as I can while it's still chucked up. It's a lot easier to sand and finish when it's on the lathe. Now here's the expansion recess right here. Now here is my dilemma with using an expansion recess. If this level right here is the finished thickness, you know, compared to the inside, the outside, I have to take all of this material away and it's a good strong eighth of an inch. Now the difficult part I believe is making sure you don't make that too thin. All right, you have to do some uh, precise calculations on that. So let me uh, get set up and I'll rechuck these up in a friction drive and I'll level off the bases and show you that process. Okay, moving right along. It's time for me to finish up the bottom of these two small bowls. I've got the one with the spigot chucked up into my lathe and I'm going to do that one first. And I'm going to do it really quickly because I don't think I need to spend a lot of time on this. This is pretty straightforward. Then I'll put this one up with the expansion recess and uh, show you how I deal with that. All right, let me show you how I've got this attached to my lathe. What I have is a drive block right here. I've got a little bit of a shelf liner and I've glued that on with some contact cement. And I'm gonna use this for both of my bowls. Bring up my tail center right there. Lock her in. All right, now we're going to take off this tenon from the bottom of this bowl. And when I did this, when I turned this, it really didn't take more than about a minute to take that tenon off. And I'll try to leave this in real time to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just kind of eating that away with the bowl gouge. I'm scraping that really and just blending that surface in. Eventually, I'll make a little detail on there, uh, which I like to do, and that kind of indicates an area that I'll eventually sign. But this area I'm working on right now, that's the finished thickness of that bowl, which really was already established, and all I have to take off is the tenon and blend that in and do a little sanding, and it is completed. Now, I mentioned before that the final thickness of my bowl was pretty well established, but I am going over this because as I reversed it, it entered in a little bit of vibration. So I just smoothed off the surface just very slightly. All right, now that took literally about a minute to take that uh, spigot tenon off there. I'm going to check my bottom here and make sure I don't have a spinner. I want this to contact the table around this area right here where I had that pencil line. And I'm in good shape. I'm contacting right about here. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding. I won't show you that. And I will put my other bowl up here and show you how I deal with this expansion recess. Okay, now I wanted to show you a few of the pieces I did uh, around 1992, a while ago. Um, this little <laughs> item right here is actually from a Richard Raffin video. He did a, oh, it was kind of a coaster for a glass. Very similar to this, and, and actually the bonnet isn't too bad. I'm not sure exactly how I checked all that up. Um, here is one, let's look at this one right here. Not a bad little, little piece, nice shape. It's a little bit thick. That's okay. Now the bottom of this is, in my words, hideous. Look at that. Looks like a mushroom or something. I should have taken that off, but at that time I didn't know any better. Here's another one. Same thing. Now the one I really wanted to show you is this piece right here. That's another one of those thick pieces I was doing at that time. I'm not sure why. 
looks like a piece of oak. But look at the bottom of that. It almost looks like it's a compression and an expansion recess all in one. But that is, I'm sorry, that's not good. That's really bad. Anyway, let's get back to the project. All right, I took a little time out to show you some of my old pieces. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm finishing the bottom of the first piece I did with the compression tenon on that. And that's all ready to go. All I've got to do is take up that little nub and sand it and sign it, and it's completed. So that's the first bowl. Let's take a look at uh, the other bowl. Here we are with the expansion recess, and I'll show you now how I deal with that. I, first of all, wouldn't do it, okay? I wouldn't leave that on there. I wouldn't use that as a chucking method. But I'm just trying to show you the difficulties you'll run across as you try to level off this surface. So I'm going to remove that expansion recess area. I'm using a push cut here. And it really isn't too bad, but the area I'm working on right there is really thick. And I have to take off quite a bit of wood uh, so that is a little bit more in proportion to the overall piece as far as the wall thickness. And I really have to take off a lot of wood out there. Well, I guess I'm saying that using an expansion fixing in some situations really offers some uh, complications when you're trying to finish off the bottom of the piece and I am a big advocate of reverse chucking and finishing this off because people look at the bottom of a, a bowl or a hollow form or a lidded box. There I'm just kind of finishing that up a little bit with a scraper and uh, pretty much finished. But this piece really does end up a little bit thicker in some areas. And it's hard to judge that. I'm taking a little gouge and I'm just kind of finishing off the very bottom of that. And back to my negative rake scraper. That's the box master scraper. And I'll put a little bit of detail on this with my point tool right here. And this is pretty much finished. Okay, there's my expansion recess bowl finished up. It really wasn't too bad. I put some of that finish on there, and boy, that's pretty wood. I just left a little area at the center right here. I can just take that and sand that down, sign the bottom, and I'll be done. So let me finish up these bowls. I'll probably do that tomorrow, let this uh, finish dry on there, and I'll show you the finished bowls.